What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the weekly trading recap. Now this week, um, SPACs took a hit early. Uh, we did get some very good ads though. The market, the, the account took a hit, but uh, rebounded very nicely. Got some very good ads. Uh, penny stocks were showing a lot of life, which is very great. I thought about trading a few, but I actually just watched them. Uh, made sure that you know they were gonna follow through and they did all week. And um, basically, just SPACs have been working for me. And I'm not gonna fix something that isn't broke. So let's hop into it here. Uh, TRNE, uh, last week's video, uh, I think it was actually Friday, possibly Thursday, that I talked about adding this at 1080 and under. Um, just seemed good, possibly 1076. I can't remember off the top of my head. But this week, this past weekend, I went through this purple line here. Um, basically, was a support area that I really wanted to ultimately hold, and that actually held true this week. Um, now, as we can see, Monday here, that is this little skinny candle, the big, the little funky candle here, and uh, that's because SPACs open under it. Now, I added 1064. That is actually around this first line coming through here. Um, so basically, I was thinking maybe that would hold. Uh, it didn't, so we added just a little bit of size. And ultimately, I got this uh, touch down here around this little support level. Now, full size ad was at 1056 here. Uh, actually, ended up going to 1033. That's why I was meaning the account was looking a little shaky. But um, the the main candle didn't close under it, closed above it, which is great. Actually, late in the day, I uh, got a push all the way up closer to close. It was low volume push. But uh, it hit ten dollars and ninety-five cents, and uh, after the main ad I had at ten fifty-six, that brought the average to about ten dollars and sixty cents on my part, and we ended up selling it at ten dollars and ninety-three cents. So it was a little thirty-three cent scalp with a lot of size for great profits. Now the very next day on Tuesday, it actually came right back down and it tested that same line. So I added this at ten dollars and fifty-one cents right off that support line and I did the exact same thing on Wednesday and actually this morning I ended up selling it. Um, it actually hit a high of $10.88. I sold it at $10.85. So it was around a 35 cent scalp on this one. And actually later in the day, I actually added this back at $10.68. We're already up 20 more cents on it, just the way it's trading. And I'm holding it into next week just cause this is a very easy scalper. Plus it has great futures, so I'm, I'm okay if it comes down, but I mean, there's minimal downside to it. Now also, PIC, it's a, a one that I traded a lot this week. Um, also had me looking a little shaky on the account, because last week we talked about adding it at 11.15 and under, if I believe. And on Monday, basically from this past weekend, um, I wanted the ultimate support here to hold and I noticed that on Friday actually this moving average was acting as resistance and there was a very big ask on the share there. A lot of shares on the ask if I could speak and that held true on Monday as well. I think there was like 18,000 shares at 1031 uh, or $11.31 um, which is about 200 grand on the, on the ask there. Now, it came back and tested this little purple line. Ultimately, I wanted that to hold, but this wasn't big support. Basically, it was just the bottom here, but this was also a moving average bounce, so I had two things going for it. It ended up falling under it, but we did add at $10.87 for a possible hold. I think it ended up popping up to that resistance, like I said, but I just kept hanging on to it. Uh, my average at this point was like $11.03. Now, I did notice on Monday as well that there was huge bids at 1051 and like 1043 if i'm not mistaken and so i looked back at the chart and actually this yellow line here um, was that 1051 and this was the resistance right in the early september that flipped to a support here and basically then it had the news that broke it out so basically i was looking for a test of that and i ended up getting it on tuesday excuse me, and I added that at $10.51, and then I noticed the lower bid there, that was the 1040 area that I was talking about, was actually a multiple topper back in July, 
and it acted as resistance and then held as support for that 1050 resistance earlier in September. So that would have been a good spot to add as well. And the very next day, um, this is what I was meaning, the account took a hit. That actually came all the way down to like 10.32 on Thursday and 10.32 on Friday as well. But the bulk of the candle was holding that, uh, that, that support level. There was also the moving average running right through there. So I was, wasn't concerned about it dipping lower and basically I was buying all dips under that 240 mark and so I was loading up in the 1030s. And uh, as you can see, late day Thursday, it actually got a little push up to uh, $10.79 was the high, but that old su sort of support line that we were holding off of acted as that resistance. That's why we didn't break over. Same thing held true for today. We couldn't break over that you know, 1080 mark really very strong only the the little stick held over it but then we also ran into the nine day moving average at eleven dollars but with all these ads we brought our average down to like ten dollars and 48 cents which is amazing uh with a ton of size ended up selling this at ten dollars and 95 cents nice 50 cent scalper here and we've already added back today at ten dollars and 68 cents on the dip i got more bids in on these two support lines uh, but right now we're already up 29, about 20 cents uh, per share that we have uh, from the ads late this afternoon. Had a strong close today. Uh, also Monday morning, uh, Spartan Energy Acquisition SPAC, my baby. Um, let's go to a smaller time frame here. So back to October the 5th, which was Monday right here. Uh, late in the day, popped up over 15. That was on the uh, merger filing of the date of when it was going to be, which is later this month. And um, that was a very nice pop. Now, last week in the video, we talked about adding that around uh, 14 and under. Now, we got the 14 and under ad, sold at a dollar per share, knew it was more than likely going to trade down. Bought the $14 dip here on Tuesday, dipped further, kept dipping, but you know, the market and SPACs were acting up. Just kept adding down uh, around the 1350s at that point because they were holding. And today we let that all go in the high 14s. It closed strong as well, but we have some in the long term account that we don't have to worry about. This is just the day trading account. So we don't have to worry about missing out on some money. Now, on Tuesday, we added a new trade, which is HCAC. I actually bought the warrants on my TD Ameritrade account. Can't trade it on Webull, so we can't look at the chart. But on the basis of this was on the daily chart. For one, SPACs were taking a hit, and the daily on Tuesday came down to this 200-day moving average. Now, the last time it did that, had a nice bounce back. So basically, we were looking for that nice bounce back. I added those warrants at $1.83. I think around the about two hours ago when I checked, they were at $1.90. Um, so we're green on it, but I do know that earlier this week they dipped down to like $1.60, something like that, $1.63, $1.65. So they were losing red. Now they are green, but we want more because I believe, you know, with some time, this can definitely pick steam back up, especially when SPACs turn around. Now, on Wednesday, if you recall last week, especially in the video, I don't know why I'm talking, typing in Wednesday, uh, I was talking about Vissel and how you know I still had it, uh, believed in it for a while, believed it was gonna you know get that spike, and the ad was around $1.30, and under it, so a 130 average, Wednesday it finally broke out, um, broke that 145 resistance area that was very strong and as you can tell that is whenever we got the big spike on the candle here the initial spike that created some FOMO and some chasers spike broke or er, spike the spike made it break out and we actually sold a dollar seventy so that was a 30 cent scalp on this one which is actually like 31 percent very a 40 cent scalp for 31 percent very very nice return on this one from a swing now I posted this one on my Twitter account um, on Wednesday. This is an LCA uh, technical buy uh, based off technicals. 
and if you look at this lower little orange line here way back in July it was sort of a support line and then acted as a resistance support basically it was a big resistance and support all the way through as you can see I got this charted at 1363 and I was buying dips under it and if it fell too far we had the moving average to bounce off of so it seemed like minimal risk added 1354 later that day I sold 1407 uh, the reason for so 50% of it at 1407 the reason for that is if you look at the chart um, just based on you know these dailies especially on the hourly chart it's easier to see around that 1410 to 1420 area there's uh, quite a bit of resistance so I felt like it was gonna back down it actually ended up backing down after hitting like 1414 so it was a great time to sell uh, the very next day it came down to like 1370 and this was on Thursday so the very next day it came down 1370 and I ended up selling later Thursday afternoon yesterday afternoon at I got it right here so the other 15% 50% at $14 and 32 cents as you can see it ended up hitting 1442 so about a 50 cent and 80 cent scalp on this play just based off a technical bounce off the support lines um, on Wednesday I also added TBLT a bunch of big traders on it uh, products are in lows uh, seems great um, here on Wednesday it actually was really trying to reclaim this moving average um, also had this other nine day below it um, volume doesn't lie price action was really good so I decided to add it minimal risk and I added 0 0.795 on this and as you can tell on Thursday it got this spike to 90 cents I ended up selling this at 89 cents so almost a 10 cent scalp on this one and I've already started to scale into this I, I have buys or I have a position now at 85 cents even on the pullback and I have ads right here at this 100 day moving average uh, for some more shares if we pull back that low but we may hold the 83 breakout position so I will keep this one on watch um, also on Wednesday I bought some spy puts uh, I like the idea from another trader that had posted it uh, basically the Trump stimulus deal um, he said it was off stock market tanked the very next day uh, Pelosi said that Trump should not have canceled the, the plan and basically it was a thing that it was a reaction of the market for saying that uh, the ad was actually around here it was a 330 put for uh, today's expiration and uh, it was 35 cents to purchase uh, shortly after that it actually came down just a little bit here and that actually made it uh, for, worth 42 cents a contract uh, so like seven dollar return uh, per option that you owned um, now I didn't sell it I wanted a little more I wanted that big drop like we had the day before uh, it didn't happen so I ended up after we spoke spiked up here I took the loss on it at uh, 29 cents so $29 $6 loss per contract on that one also on Wednesday I posted a chart idea for flying Eagle acquisition company like I said SPACs have been very good to me here lately and if you look at this initial little top white line here I noticed that you know it was lows around here and it was lots of tops through here and it was low as here so basically on Wednesday here I just expected the low to hold now I did notice that uh, a little bit lower on this gray line was sort of where the main bulk of the candle was falling through here and it was also you know some some bulk of the candle over here on the lows um, so basically it was an ad at 12 or 1185 um, this was Wednesday so it was the seventh so right here as you can see we actually the lowest it went was eleven dollars and ninety five cents that day uh, my ad was twelve dollars even the very next day it actually spiked up let's go to a, a different time frame chart here so Friday Thursday Wednesday seventh. so we added Wednesday 
at $12 even off that line, didn't go far under it. Uh, Thursday, as you can see, it actually broke out a little bit, had a 12.65 high of the day, I believe, and we sold it at $12.46. Uh, only sold 50% of the shares, and I'm glad I did because this morning it broke out crazy big. Um, and I didn't hold it, actually let it go a little too early, I let it go at 13.45, but it was a very great scalp just off the support buy that ended up holding, which is very great. That's why I love technical trading. Now also, let's flip to Thursday. So on Thursday, uh, the main trade that we have not talked about yet was GameStop. Um, so GameStop and Microsoft had the partnership news here on Thursday, as you can tell by this. So whenever I saw that this was halted, I figured just with a Microsoft name that this was going to go to a new high this year, 52 week high. And that 52 week high was previously right here. And I saw this, that it was a top, a top, a top, a top, bulk of the candle, bulk of the candle, and two little sticks of the candle. And that's this little purple line. And so basically I charted that. And then I charted the very, very top, which was the yellow line around the top. Not, not exactly. Now, whenever I flipped over to my five minute chart, when it unhalted, I noticed it break out and I was very patient. And actually, as you can see, it pulled all the way back exactly to where those top resistances were for the 52 week high. And it actually pulled all the way back to that support line, dead to the money on it. And hit 1061 I ended up I saw that saw that it was strong with it and so I bought uh, 1064 within five ten minutes I scalped that at eleven dollars and 23 cents so 59 cent per share scalp off that within minutes now I had my eye on this uh, basically the yellow line we were sort of consolidating over it as you can see through here for a re-entry but I didn't really like these candle spikes going under it and the price, just the price action was super weird on it. So I didn't want to re-enter and give back those gains, but it ended up holding. And as you remember, that yellow line back on the daily was the very, very top of the 52 week high. So that is why I was really wanting that range to hold. And it technically did. It never broke the full candle under it, which was amazing. Now, what else did we trade? Uh, late in the day yesterday, obviously weed stocks were going off nutty yesterday and Hexo, I noticed toward the close was right around here at this 80 cents, 80 to 83 cents is some big resistance over that. I definitely think it can test a dollar. Now what I noticed is was well, basically what I was wanting here was a, from this push and after hours was to sort of gap up over the resistance and pre-market and open higher. Um, usually that happens. Now we didn't technically clear it all, so it could have been why it didn't happen. So I added 0 0.785 here late in the day yesterday, right before close. And today I ended up selling it at 0 0.79. So basically not a win. I mean, it's a, I guess it's a minor win, but it's not really a loss. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have taken the loss so early because it's still holding up. But like I said, that is just big resistance and it may reject down further. And I just felt like I get a better entry on this if I wait. Now on Friday, I didn't technically sell or add anything that we haven't already discussed. Basically, uh, you know, I talked about selling PIC and adding it back. I sold TRNE today, added it back. Um, I got the bids in at those support lines if you want to go back and watch it. Um, so yeah, that was my week. A um, lot of wins and losses or lots of wins, only one technical loss. Now, I do know some people that took the trade ideas and took the losses just because it was coming down, but I was very patient with it. I just felt like that the SPACs were gonna rebound. They were at very good prices, almost bottomed out at the $10 um, exchange value, I guess you could say. And so it was just smart to keep buying those down low. And eventually, you know, it, it, they spiked up and paid off. Uh, went from really red to really green. Um, Lots of great trades in between. Uh, so yeah, 
that's going to do it, folks. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate it. Peace out, guys.